patients that, that are typically referred or who self-refer to the program are individuals who maybe have a diagnosis of cancer at a younger age than would it be expected, such as breast cancer or colon cancer, maybe before the age of 50, or they have a family member like that. Families with unusual cancers, um, pheochromocytomas, um, paragangliomas, um, male breast cancer, those would be people that, that I might see. Families with multiple family members, so there's, there's, there's two sisters with breast cancer, or we see multiple generations. We see more cancer than you would expect by chance, and a lot of times it's just families that are concerned, they're not sure, what does this mean for me? There's no one size fits all for how we decide who gets testing, and it's, it's very individual. So sometimes we're seeing families that are just concerned about um, that risk, and they want to explore it a little bit better. Not everybody I see gets genetic testing. Sometimes we don't really need to, to take that step, but maybe they need their screening guidelines reorganized. Maybe there's not, say, true genetic risk or we've tested family members and we can't figure it out, but they may benefit from having their mammography guidelines re revised or something. So we do a lot of that kind of um, looking at the guidelines and each family after we see them and we've kind of come to a point where we can't do any more testing, that each individual receives a letter outlining what their recommendations for care should look like based on the history, based on the genetic testing and what we know about that person. If someone really just wants to explore what their risk looks like, we are glad to talk with them and help them sort through it. Um, the alternative to testing is always not testing, and for some people not testing is is a better choice. Testing comes with a lot of emotional issues. Parents are worried that that they may have passed something to their children. Sometimes families don't get along as nicely as, as, as you would like. So we can help families to kind of work through those types of issues. Patients often have questions about discrimination. Um, there are federal protections for job and health insurance, um, but there are not federal protections for life insurance, disability, or long-term care insurance. And we'll talk to, those, to them about those things um, before they would, would embark on testing. So this is not usually just a one appointment and we're done. This is usually a series of steps and maneuvers. Um, my job is to advocate for the patient. My job is to, to protect, um, to protect their, 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 their best interest and also then to help them define what would be the most appropriate um, regimen for care. So it's usually not just where we do see them once and we're finished, it's usually multiple steps. Genetic testing has been available since probably about 1999. Um, early on, not so many people took advantage of it and, and were, were uncomfortable doing it. But we have families who might have had testing um, in the early 2000s and um, nothing was detected. And that does not mean that they don't have hereditary risk. We've gone from testing for one or two genes to now most of the time I'm ordering 46 plus genes on, on, on a family member. So um, it's an evolving science. So just because someone has tested positive, tested negative in the past doesn't mean that, that they're not going to test positive now. We look at who's the best person to test. Sometimes we get conflicted results and you know we're not sure if it's a harmful change or a harmless change in the genetic material and over time we can often sort that out. So um, it, they should view this as a long-term process. This is not just a one-time.